we are going to demonstrate the Azure CNI. In previous video, we talked about KubeNet model for AKS networking, as you can see. Uh, this is the first video in the AKS network uh, session in the AKS series. And here we talked about the KubeNet networking, which is also known as BASIC, and Azure CNI networking, which is also known as, also known as advanced. Uh, we did the demonstration of KubeNet in the previous video, and today we are going to deploy Azure CNI. And in previous video, we did this with the help of CLI, but here we're going to use Azure Portal. Okay, so we would have both ways of knowing uh, deployment of AKS networking model. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into the demonstration. Well, you need to type here Kubernetes. I was working on that. So it's showing in the recent services. You got to click on that. And then we are going to click on add, add Kubernetes cluster. Okay. Now here I need to provide the resource group, uh, my AKS RG. Click OK. Need to provide the cluster name, my AKS. Then leave everything blank. One node is enough. We are only checking uh, or only demonstrating the Azure CNI. Nothing much. So let's come to the networking quickly. Now, basic. Basic is for KubeNet. If you remember, when we deploy Kubernetes without selecting anything it goes on basic configuration which uses the kubenet model but if you click on advanced you have so many options to choose that is azure cni so before we jump and talk about all right let's go through these options first and then we'll talk about while it will deploy we can do that so with uh, azure cni every pod gets an IP address from the subnet and you can be and, and that can be accessed directly these IP addresses must be unique across your network space and must be planned in advance right we have all already covered all that part so here uh, you, you can choose the I do not have any existing virtual network, but if you have existing virtual network, you can choose that one and the cluster subnet. But as I said, ports are going to get the IP address from the subnet, so you have to do the additional planning, right? So let me quickly deploy this one and we'll talk about the additional planning examples a little more. So this is your uh, Azure Virtual Network where you would have your other Azure resources as well along with the pods running in one of the subnet use utilizing the IP address from the same address space not like kubenet so here we need to provide a kubenet service address range and we all know that this is a set of virtual IPs that kubernetes assign to internal services in your cluster Okay, you can use any private address range uh, to satisfy the IP address range because the only thing, the whole point, what I'm trying to say is the only point is though, although technically you can, you can use the IP address from the same virtual network as your cluster. But doing so is not recommended so do not use the ip addresses which are getting used in the virtual network right or the docker bridge address so, and there are few ranges of ip address i guess we talked about that in the previous video these ip address should not be used okay and make sure uh, your uh, kubernetes service address space is also not overlapping with the on-premises IP addresses or virtual network which are peered things like that okay all right so uh, Kubernetes DNS service IP address well this will come from the above address space but do not use the first one it is usually the 10th IP address uh, 
Uh, first one is not because the first address in your subnet range is used for the Kubernetes default SVC cluster dot local address. Okay. Now we have this Docker bridge address. Docker bridge address represents the default Docker bridge network address present in all Docker installation. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you're working on Kubernetes, if you're learning Kubernetes, you must have covered the Docker. So Bridge is the Docker's network, right? So this is the address space for the Docker Bridge network. While Docker Bridge is not used by AKS cluster or the pods themselves, you must set this address to continue to support scenarios such as Docker build within the AKS cluster, okay? and it is required to select a CIDR for the Docker bridge network address because otherwise Docker will pick a subnet automatically which could conflict with the other CIDRs. You must pick an address space that does not uh, you know, collide or overlap with the rest of the CIDRs. Cool. Okay, well, network policies we'll cover in the next video. So this is the basic configuration. The only thing we did, we chose advanced and rest of the things will be taken care by the Azure itself. So I'm gonna hit review and create. And it will go and create the resources. Meanwhile, just wanna go through a few things, right? To make clear things up. So in Azure CNI, every pod get an IP from cluster subnet and can be accessed directly, okay? And Azure CNI is something which requires more planning and strategy, as we said before. Reason being, it will get the IP addresses directly from the Azure Virtual Network, which means we have the cap of IP addresses, right? Let me try to explain how. For example, uh, when you scale an AKS cluster, a new node is deployed into the cluster. Services and workloads begin to run on the new node. Your IP addresses range needs to take into consideration how you may want to scale up the number of nodes and pods your cluster can support. One additional node for upgrade operations should also be included. Your node count is then n plus one, right? Moreover, we cannot have more than, you know, in, 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 in a subnet, we have 251 IP addresses. That means we can run 251 nodes right and in each node we have by default 110 parts that we can run that means 110 ips are already been occupied we need to plan all that in advance if we are going to run or, or deploy a load balancer internal load balancer that is going to utilize an ip address from the same subnet where a cluster is running so you need to consider all those IP addresses. You need to plan everything in advance. That's why it is uh, more planning and designing as compared to the basic. Okay. Uh, there were a few things that we covered in previous video, but I think it's worth mentioning here. For example, a subnet where your AKS cluster is running must have outbound internet connectivity okay and we talked about few ip addresses that uh, we cannot choose or aks cannot choose these 169.172.172.192 these ip addresses these are mentioned in the ms documentation i'll share it in the description box and if you remember when we were creating the AKS cluster, it asked for the service principle that must have a network contributor access. Okay. On the subnet within your virtual network 
or if you have on the entire uh, subscription then then it is fine but if you want to have a little more uh, you know granular then you can do this now you cannot assign the AKS node pool to any delegated subnet okay AKS node pool all right cool so these are the things that we need to keep in mind and there are a few things I just wanted to mention here uh, things like minimum number of pod is 10 and maximum is 250 in Azure CNI but if you're using uh, KubeNet, then it would be 110 maximum. By default, 30 pods. Default is 30 pods per node in Azure CNI. Okay. These, these are some default parameters that you keep in mind, especially in the case of Azure CNI, uh, because you gotta have planned things, right? Now, people may ask questions like, can I deploy VMs in my cluster subnet? Yes, you can. And people do ask questions like, can I configure per pod network policies that we will cover when we cover the network policies? But the answer is yes. And as I said, maximum minimum. So these numbers are configurable for sure. Okay. All right. So this is all about Azure CNI. Okay. Let me check if our deployment is done and because it takes time. So, all right. There it is. My AKS Kubernetes cluster. And you can see the side ranges, bridge ranges, and here it says CNI. So this is our Azure CNI deployment with the help of uh, what we say portal. We did the CLI in the previous video for the deployment of uh, KubeNet model. And if you want to use this one, you can use simply this uh, AZAKS create. You need to provide the resource group, name of your cluster, plugin Azure. This is where we define the KubeNet in the previous video. It requires the ID where we are deploying it, and the bridge address, DNS service, service cider, and we need the SSH keys. Once you run this, and it will deploy the same thing that we deployed with the help of Azure portal. And these are the things that we talked about. So thank you for watching and you have a good day. Bye-bye.